The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and thank you for joining with us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know we will be talking about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth during this particular time. Now today on the show I wanted to talk about a topic I feel is necessary to discuss about with the youth because nobody is perfect, everybody makes their own mistakes and I feel this topic people need more awareness on this topic and that's love. Now love is something that people need to live, like you know, they look for love in someone, in another person, they need that love, care, affection. And to talk on this topic, we have Dr. Uttara Ilangakon, who is a clinical psychologist. Doctor, thank you very much for taking the time to join me on the show. I know this is a very sensitive, maybe controversial, maybe subjective topic, but I need your intake on this. I think the youth also needs it right now because during these hard times, everybody's not stable. They're not having a really good mindset at the moment and they tend to hurt a lot of people. They tend to make take decisions which are not good for them, like very rash decisions. And sometimes these decisions end up hurting another person. So to talk about that now, love, can come in all sorts of ways. There are different types of love. There is motherly love, there's a teacher's love, there's a love of a friend, and there's also a love between a male and a female. So in your terms, what exactly is love? Because it's very difficult to understand the manners of your heart. Yes. So love, when it comes to love, definition-wise, love can differ from person to person because what their experiences, where they come from, what they have seen, what they have seen in their in their family life, uh, what they have been taught could differ. Mm -hmm. But if we are to, and also somebody's culture might differ and uh, the religious aspects might also come into play. All these factors together can also define what love is for somebody. But with all of that, still there are certain factors that love consists of. So for example, one would be intimacy, another would be compassion and uh, commitment, and the other would be um, uh, uh, being passionate about the passion. So intimacy, when it comes to intimacy, intimacy means um, being able to connect with somebody, wanting to connect with somebody, the bond between that person. And um, passion is where you feel the need to connect with that person physically, sexually, you're driven. And then um, uh, commitment is, like commitment, you say, even the teachers we have heard, be committed to this uh, subject, do this well. Uh, if you're not committed, you won't be able to get through. It's the same thing even with relationship. You're committed to this person. You want to be there for this person. You make that decision to be there for this person. And when it comes to intimacy, intimacy can be different things. It could be sexually, it could be emotionally, it could be intellectually. So there are different aspects of intimacy also and what becomes important, which aspect becomes important differs from person to person. For one person, the sexual intimacy, that feeling intimate with that person, the sexual connection will be a priority, will be a big need. And for the other person, uh, I want to intellectually be able to connect with this baby. I want to be able to have intellectual conversation with this person. So some one person can get attracted with that towards that other person. So 
these things when there is intimacy good intimacy there's good passion and commitment for that relationship but now when considering love doctor do you think it's a constant thing now when considering a love between two people mm -hmm. do you think it's constant because you chose choose to love one person and do you think it's going to last because that comes we draw a line between you know being in love and being in a relationship mm -hmm. what do you think the difference is there being in love that's the first thing we feel you know, like feel uh, attracted to that particular person and then uh, that spark that wanting to meet this person see this person last um that uh, nervousness that attraction those are the first few things that we start feeling when we are getting into a relationship at first but when you're getting into a relationship it's more than that yes it's also there but remember when you're in a relationship that spark can also die down but that does not mean what you don't care about this person you're not committed for this person you might need to put a lot of effort and there comes value systems into play understanding each other in a relationship you are trying to get to know this person inside out the darker secrets what this person likes what this person doesn't like um what this person has gone through uh, difficulties this person might have you connect with this person in a deeper level trying to understand this person and then to some extent there can be that initial honeymoon period may not be to that extent be there but that doesn't mean it disappears but you might need to put a bit of extra effort to maintain that you might need to find ways to maintain that but doesn't mean it's not there now some people say doctor mainly the young people they say okay the first few months were amazing we had that spark it was we were energetic we were always meeting up with each other but with time i felt that everything was dying out we stopped talking to each other but you were right you need to put in that extra effort to make it work but they say why should we put in a lot of effort in a relationship when love is something that needs to come naturally sometimes it can come naturally like we look when we feel a seer person we feel attracted to that person that attraction is the first thing we start feeling but loving a person is we try to get to know this person or uh, we start liking this person's uh, qualities uh, personality then it develops but the thing is we are human beings and it's always even even with anything that hype is for the first few seconds even if you get an award that hype is there for like probably few months or few weeks it dies down but that does not mean the value how important that is goes away it's up to us to how to see it and one thing is initially we say i love you we drop a lot of love it away messages but love can also as you go into relationship could be coming out in different ways like did you eat uh, did you have a nap today are you tired today are you all right you may not say i love you all the time but that does not mean it's not there but it's you're connected in a deeper level that is what it means so you do believe that you know in a relationship there must be effort effort and that's why you say commitment passion intimacy and commitment commitment through good times as well as bad times there can be difficulties trying to be able to connect with this person but that effort you put because you are committed to this person you chose this person and that is what differs that so, but keeps love right so do you think being in a relationship is a choice that you are making of course you always have a choice mm -hmm. you always technically you're supposed to have a choice be able to want to stay in this relationship so being in love some people say no i had no choice it just happened i had feelings for this person mm -hmm. but it's a choice that you make whether you want to be with this person for a long period of time is it yes so that's the thing you might feel attracted you might 
feel connected with one person okay you may be already in a relationship some people come and say i start liking this person as well. i feel like this person is also i feel connected with though i am in a relationship but then comes your moral compass should i be in this relationship should i be connected to this person be committed to this person or should i go ahead with this person so then you have to make a choice what is what is your moral compass saying mm -hmm. how do you make sure that you make the right choice because you can't understand people it sometimes is very difficult to even understand yourself yeah. so how do you know that okay this is the person i want to be with this is the person i want to be committed to you feel like it no at one point you know okay this this is good whether it's with the good times or through the bad times you feel like okay i you know in your gut feeling i want to be with this person but here there's always a risk you don't know what will happen mm -hmm. that it's how yes it's good to plan your years ahead into a relationship good to have an idea but also be realistic and understand that there can be changes so look at what happened to all of us 3 years ago we never expected there could be something like corona and we won't be able to go to work but we adapted right we 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 learned to go with that so certain challenges might come your way but you are not hoping for it to come but you're hoping things will be good there can be challenges that you can't stop that's the way it is that's why it depends on person to person and if you are committed to each other both of you all need to put a lot of effort into that relationship not just one person dragging the whole relationship and trying to keep that's it together true. another important point dr you mentioned challenges now when challenges come up there are people who are saying oh my gosh this is really hectic i don't think i can commit myself to a relationship right now because there are other things that i need to be worried about mm -hmm. so do you think that it's the right thing to do because one person might be wholeheartedly committed mm -hmm. and they might want to feel like okay whatever the challenges that might come in my way i'm going to stick with this person be there for this person but one might feel okay there are so many barriers in life it's just difficult to handle everything at one point mm -hmm. so what do we do at that point so hey, in uh, to answer to that question here's the thing now what is impacting that person to uh not continue with that relationship differs like for example let's say one person is finding it difficult to change and adapt and compromise okay i don't like change i want things to be the same now that's not realistic mm -hmm. it comes with our expectation things are not going to be the same how it was months ago the same way it's not going to be the same way throughout your life so you might also have to adapt but let's say um, a person is actually going through a lot at once and unable to commit to this person because that person does not have that emotional and the mental capacity to commit to that no man okay let's say the, yeah like you said the other person is wholeheartedly loving this person but still if that person is unable to be there for that person yes you might hurt that person by leaving that person But that's the right thing to do rather than hurting the person otherwise you will be hurting that person even more okay so in a way you do love this person and that's why you're letting this person go all right doctor we are getting into a very emotional topic also and i want to continue this discussion but before that let's go into a short commercial break you're watching gen xyz and we'll be back soon Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we are in discussion with Dr. Uttara, and she is a clinical psychologist. Dr. Uttara, you gave. We were getting into a very emotional and sensitive topic. Now to continue on that discussion, um, 
I want to know like the evolution of relationships. Now modern day relationships are completely different to what you know our parents or the older generations mm -hmm. used to have. Mm -hmm. Like why do you think that there is an evolution of this relationship and how is it different? Because when I compare mm -hmm. the status of relationships then and now, mm -hmm. The olden day relationships, I feel, you know, people actually lasted longer for a longer period of time and, you know, some, I can't specifically say that whether they were happy or not, but uh, still you find people staying together for a longer period of time. I mean marriage. In marriage, yes. Hmm. Because as soon as they get into a relationship in olden times, like people got married hmm. and there was and you know early marriages were a thing here in sri lanka also and it was a cultural thing but here now in modern day relationships i don't see a lot of relationships working maybe two three months and they're off or maximum two years or so they stop and even if they get married like within a year or so they get divorced and the divorce rates are immensely high compared to the previous years why do you think the reasons are so um, so we'll start with the evolution part, how it has changed. So what love relationship meant to our parents, our grandparents and to us could differ. How it differs? Starting with the role love played. For example, there was love marriages versus arranged marriages. But back then there were more arranged marriages, right? But the role love played, should you be in love to get married to this person or love comes after this, after you get into the relationship. Now, there were differences in those aspects, those belief systems culturally um, and that had a issue, that had a difference as well. And another thing was the mode of love. So for example, how we love. Now, I remember my grandmother, our grandparents, you also might have heard uh, Sia came to the bus stand to yes. see me and uh, would uh, come and we would talk at the bus stand and then we go to go home together. It doesn't have to be Sia's or Archie's, Archie's even parents, parents had the same they conversation. Yeah. So um, then with all of that, now there's more technology, how you meet a person, there are dating apps. You, even you meet sometimes people on Instagram, Facebook, all of that and how you communicate with each other and what has become important also has changed. Like for example, oh, you didn't put a post, you haven't put a picture <laughs> of us together. So relationship wise, how it continues, uh, now younger generations, I have seen even if the parents are uh, getting them proposals, they still prefer to talk to the person mm -hmm. beforehand, try to get to know this person. I think they still look for that, okay, I want to feel, okay, love may come later, but I still need to feel connected to this person at least. Or at least try to know who this person I'm trying to get into marriage with. So things like that. A lot of things have changed because a lot of factors, modes and technology, a lot of things have come to play. And then to answer uh, to your question, the divorce rates, why, uh, why there are breakups, separations, why it was not there back then. One reason why it was less back then could be even when a relationship when when our family family was involved a lot and when family found somebody for this girl or this boy there was family pressure to stay together i would feel like that also played a huge role and i feel like that could also be one reason why there are less uh, breakups and uh, uh, divorce divorces um, in addition to that, the stigma was there. Like even if you separate or break the engagement or um, break up with this person or divorce this person, how am I going to face the society? How am I going to face my relatives? To be honest, there was stigma even from the society coming towards them. 
they were also looking at them as okay that's the end of this person's life uh, coming back to the current modern times i think that's less i think there is change in that aspect because society is more accepting of okay if you really don't want to be with this person it's okay just break up it's not the end of your life you can find someone better i mean even the friends openly say even our families openly say that i think that support is also coming up and in addition to that uh, the even if you are a single mother even if you are a single father uh, they are empowered they are motivated encouraged to thrive in their life and to show look it's not the end you can still find a partner i think society itself in the society itself there's more acceptance towards that so these things positive things can also have a reason why there are more they are here now to modern times and why it was less back then but to come to problems like modern issues i think um without being aware of what they really want what their needs are some uh, girls and boys get into relationship fast and then realize okay this is not for me i i i shouldn't be in a relationship they figure that out while being in the relationship right and uh, and the other thing is i have also heard i just i this is just for fun that is just for fun but you have to be mindful with it is just fun for the other person as well right that's true because, because there's another person involved and um, other things are like communication is less i mean i wouldn't say it was more back then there may have been gaps there as well but still couples the open communication wise yes it's improving but it's still there are miscommunications there they try to mind read um uh, not openly communicate in the, your own boundaries because okay a person should respect the other person boundaries but the other person also need to communicate what these boundaries are also otherwise the other person also doesn't know um what not to cross and what am i even crossing that question comes up okay i didn't know this and another major aspect is trauma like uh, there could be a lot of trauma baggage we bring into relationships and we are not aware of these things what are our trigger points what are our attachment styles what are our conflict resolution uh, methods there can be gaps in those things like for example one could be very confrontational when it comes to resolving a conflict the other person might be very avoidant but we are not aware of these things and then then comes compromise we learn to understand communicate okay this did not work with me why are you doing this shall we figure this out shall we try to find balance and then to do that to compromise both need to try to adapt go with the change willing to compromise because one person can't only just do that okay my way is okay i'm getting angry you just keep quiet now that doesn't work because there is another person with a lot of emotion who might need to communicate so there are a lot of gaps in that aspect at the same time and being aware of where we come from our belief systems um our trauma understanding our trigger points not being aware of that can also be a reason why individuals end up separating okay doctor now within that discussion i am getting more sub questions as well you mentioned an important point of social media about the modes of communication of modes of com- connecting and also about marriage now the huge question comes now what's marriage why do we even need a paper to 
you know state that yes i am committed to this person some some feel that okay marriage is just a piece of paper where you are just handcuffed into and you have no choice afterwards but then some people think no this is an assurance it is a constant reminder of you know that our bond between each other mm. what do you think about that good point now even there it's very subjective of how they say this marriage certificate is like why do you think that perce- perception is different it comes with again your experiences that you have seen it could be in your family you have seen bad marriage and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, trauma there are a lot of things uh, underlying um, uh, again connected to your past, past and like exactly like trust there have been uh, individuals in your environment where they were disloyal to each other and you have seen somebody where they feel like i'm trapped in this marriage so all these belief systems get molded mm-hmm. and then we bring in all of these belief systems into the relationship and we see what marriage is through that so that's why i said it's it's always good to work through your trauma work through your difficult experience that helps you to find balance in your belief systems otherwise we do have sunglasses where and we wear the sunglasses and come into the relationships doctor in your opinion what do you think uh, marriage is do you think that it's necessary to say that okay yes i do love this person marriage is necessary to say that i love this person mm-hmm. i don't think so mm-hmm. i don't think it's 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 one way of saying i think marriage being married to a person this commitment okay i am i am going to decide i'm going to love this person throughout as long as we are being married i'm going to love this person that way i think it's one way of showing that but i don't think everybody will see that in that way marriage is necessary to show this person i love this person but like you said some people see it as a constant reminder even in difficult times look i decided to be with this person through thick and thin okay another stigma uh, i would say that i want to touch on is you know the living together concept mm-hmm. now this was something very new uh, to sri lanka but it was accepted in other countries but now right now if we tell that okay yes i'm living together with this person there's so much of stigma saying that my gosh this person is not married but still living together mm-hmm. and even if you know the couple decides okay this is not going to work out mm-hmm. it might be difficult for one person to get accepted again into another relationship or maybe even by their parents mm-hmm. saying that oh my gosh you already lived with this person mm-hmm. how can you even think of you know staying with another person mm-hmm. So what do you think of these new modern ways of dealing with uh, relationships? Okay. So when it comes to uh living together concept Sri Lanka is still not uh ready to ready accept. to accept that. But why some individuals again go for that option? is for that reassurance okay i am compatible uh this person is compatible with me uh, and also it's like a trial and an error method okay um we are going to have challenges how are we face in these things together and uh, then we'll decide whether we are going into marriage or not so it's like um you are like being married but you are just trying to see how it works how the two of you all are functioning in those difficult situation and uh, dealing with these situations together and then again they go into this relationship to make sure why they want to reassure again comes with those experiences past experiences and uh, what they've been taught what they have seen seen so they're trying to not to repeat that in their life so some actually many really do come with that 
intention into that but if you really want to do that you also need to understand where we live it's sri lanka and we have parents we have culture um so there is a uh, there's a huge challenge there as well but i would say if the parents and the young couple can have an open communication conversation try to both being both ends i don't know how realistic it is but if it can happen be open minded and try to understand what is bothering this young couple and what our concerns are as parents i don't think there's no way that you cannot find balance also where you can to come to some sort of a compromise and see how you move about it but it can be challenging in sri lanka if you really want to do that out of i mean uh, other countries might be more open for this concept rather than sri lanka but uh, why people come to that yes because of those kind of reasons and because we have heard those reasons Okay doctor let's continue this discussion but before that let's go into another short commercial break we'll be back soon and you're watching Gen XYZ Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we've been talking about modern day relationships, about love, about marriage, about commitment, and so many emotional topics. And with the discussion, uh, it's my pleasure to have you, Doctor Miss uh, Uttara. And to continue our discussion, Doctor, what do you think? You know, some people come and say. we are not compatible with each other this person is completely different to me we can't match but some people say oh my gosh you two look great together you two look similar you two do exactly the same things you know perfectly a perfect match mm. but then you know there are other couples who say this person is completely different from me i don't think that this is going to work out mm. how do they come to that middle point where they feel that okay this person is actually different but I want to make this work. So when it comes to that compatibility and okay this person is different from me when they are actually saying different what they are trying to actually mean is not the differences okay what you eat is different and what you like it to eat is different it's more like they are stating how different their value systems are that um they find it conflicting to a great extent you see differences aren't going to make a relationship uh um uh, to a point where you all break up i don't think differences on uh, is the reason why it happens because look even if you were 100% the same like let's say you would eat the same thing you drink the same stuff that also some people come and say that's really boring mm-hmm. because when there are differences you actually try to understand this person and make it uh, to like that particular thing for that person because you care about that person but still there are people complaining right we are still different okay these people say no matter what we look the same and all of that we are still different why they are actually focusing on value system value systems and deep level like some for one person it could be transparency could be important open communication could be important loyalty could be important i i don't like if somebody is lying to get their way i don't like if a person is um if a person is uh, uh what do you call um uh having certain behaviors yeah, certain behaviors could be uh like drinking some people are really not okay with drinking and smoking mm. so what they are trying okay drinking to a great extent probably mm-hmm. some people don't like it at all some people okay i don't mind i'll be all right with that but this is more than this mm-hmm. so those are behavior patterns 
so there can be all of these things together but they are actually trying to mean like we are not compatible not differences per se but more like value systems mm -hmm. but even with value systems you still can try to find compromise you still can try to find balance with communication but that does not mean you have to tolerate abusive behaviors toxic behaviors that's where you draw the line you can understand somebody where they come from what they have gone through you understand you can be compassionate you can be empathetic but it is not a reason it can never be used as a reason to hurt another person it happens i know it happens but still it comes to a point it's not fair by the other person as well mm -hmm. so where can you draw the line doctor and say that okay but some people say i'm making this sacrifice i'm bearing up with this because i love the person mm -hmm. that's what makes him or her happy so that's why i'm making this sacrifice from my end mm -hmm. so where do we draw the line saying that okay this is abuse and this is something which is not okay to be okay with mm -hmm. and say that okay i'm not okay with this can we change something mm -hmm. where can we draw that line if somebody is getting angry and there are arguments with each other yes that can happen i'm not going to say relationships are going to be all rainbows and flowers that's an unrealistic expectation but whether you're getting angry whether you're getting uh, into arguments all of that you are still responsible for your own emotions you can still make a choice to work through that you can still make that choice i'm going to do something about this and work on it mm -hmm. the other person can help but that partner can't fix that for that person because you need to do it you need to work through that and abuse is where it comes to a point where this other person is oppressed unable to communicate physically been beaten up sexually emotionally been manipulated um mind reading keeping scores intentionally harming somebody and then saying because i was angry i did that now that's you can't say that because you are responsible no matter what you have gone through yes we understand what we have gone through we understand what each other gone through but you are still responsible to work through your own emotions and experiences and trauma so would you say patience plays an important role here patience is important you can be patient with that person be there for that person provide that person with the necessary support but the other person also has to take that step to work through that if that person is not making that step forward and the other person is saying uh, other person is the one to uh, be asked to just you know you stay quiet you do this you tolerate this i love you no matter what you 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 are the only person who can save me no that person cannot save you you have to save yourself always you have to work towards that that is true so would you call that a toxic relationship how would you define toxicity yes to some extent some extent not to some extent yes to that if if one person is being harmed in any way in a way that the other person is not taking accountability and responsibility yes that per, that relationship is not healthy okay now there you have to draw the line <laughs> right so that's when you have to decide whether we are actually going to stay together or no mm. yes even if it's uh, after a long period of time even if it is after a long period of time because otherwise the consequences can be much more but if you start all of a sudden have a child and then some people think okay you need to stay together for this child no actually what if that can create more trauma for the child right 
Okay, so coming back to modern day relationships, Doctor, I want to know how can young people identify the difference between love and attraction? Because some people, they believe in, you know, they fall in love with at first sight. You know, that, that exactly, for me, at least it's not love because you need to get to know the other person in order to really fall in love. So, but also some people say, but I do love the company of this person, so that's why I decided to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But this can be a very, you know, it's not long lasting. Mm -hmm. They might just need a temporary satisfaction or just the concerns that, you know, okay, this person appreciates me at this time. I like her energy, I like his or her energy, so it gives me good vibes, so that's why I want to stay. Mm. So where can you draw the line and say, okay, this is love, no, this is attraction. Mm -hmm. So attraction is where to some extent you feel infatuated with this person, you feel, um, uh, you feel physically attracted to this person, and sometimes there's the sexual aspect to it. Um, but to answer to your question, we cannot say uh, somebody deciding to stay in that relationship and just, you know, I feel good right now is wrong. If it is okay with the other partner also. If it is working out for them, that's all right. But if you want love, there's more to that. You need to get to know the person. You need to understand this person inside out. And then comes commitment. Love has commitment. Attraction, there may be some flexibility there where there may be commitment, there may not be commitment, depending on how they have that agreement on how they are continuing with the relationship. But with love, I, there is a commitment part. Like I mentioned earlier, there's, that's one aspect, commitment, passion, intimacy. Okay, doctor. So, but some people might say, I'm in a relationship for the casual convenience because I, I really like this person. Mm -hmm. But they say no, but in the long run, it's not my thing. I don't think I'll be able to get married to this person or be in a serious relationship. So, how can you avoid this situation? Now, even that, are we to say no to that and ask them not to do that? We don't have the right to do that. If both the people are okay with that, okay, fine. If it is working out for them, they can do it. But Here's the thing, no matter what you say, you're physically connected with somebody, you're sexually connected, you're intimately in other aspects you're connected with somebody, over time you develop some sort of an emotional connection with this person. Yes. And there is a risk, what if the other person starts developing uh, emotional connection with this person, even though you agree with this, that can happen because we are emotional beings. Then the other person sometimes comes and says, see, I agree, see, I told you in the beginning, I'm not, I'm not ready for a committed relationship. Then again, I think, again, this other person needs to understand what my attachment styles are. What is, what, why am I also having a difficulty committing to a relationship in this, in this way, interpersonal relationship? why I have that difficulty in interpersonal relationships. But there is still a risk where you might actually develop feelings for this person because we are emotional beings. We drive with emotions. This whole body is a container of emotions. And uh, doctor, I think we had this discussion prior to the recording also. You told that it's important to live at the moment, live at the present. But for me, I feel it's a little bit difficult to do that because once you have an emotional connection with someone it's just hard to not think of a future with that person because you know that you love the person you care for the person and you would always like to have a future with that person of <laughs> so how can you live in the moment you know without focusing on the future 
Okay, so I'm not saying you can't dream of a future. You can have an idea, okay, I would like to have this in my life. None of us, we want the relationships to not to go well. When we are getting into a relationship, we are hoping, when we are getting into a committed relationship, we are hoping this works. We always hope for the best. But yes, you can get married, all of that, but you still can't decide 10 years ahead how, whether it's going to be the same picture as you imagine in your mind. So what I'm asking is go with that understanding there can be changes as well. Otherwise what happens is we become intolerant, intolerant of this uncertainty and we get so disappointed it comes to a point it's so heartbreaking. But the disappointment becomes less if we also go with that mindset yes i would love to and i'm going to work towards this but there can be changes you never know but i'll pass the ball as it comes to me okay doctor and we have come to unfortunately we don't have much more time to talk about this topic but there's more questions that i need to ask sure. you about but as my final question what can you say what message can you give to the youth regarding relationships and their love? In short, if you can say something. Yes. Now, in modern days, there are different types of relationships, casual relationships, committed relationships, different types. But know what you really want. And if you are getting into a relationship, um, and let's say you're looking for a committed or not something without commitment, be openly open about it and communicate that to this other person. Then even that other person can decide whether this person can want to be in this relationship or not. Because without communicating what you really want also, um, and then you get into a relationship, remember there's another person involved and other person's emotions, a lot of uh, feelings and when you are getting into a relationship those things are also there you have to consider, you have to be considerate at least to some extent. So but you know what you really want right now, be open about it, you can communicate and you can always find a partner who is aligning with that expectation, that's a better way. So have open communication, conversations, know what you really want, be aware, work through your difficulties and if you are getting into, getting into marriage, know what marriage is, um, see whether you are really ready for it, get to know this person at least to some extent uh, but also understand, I do understand this person, I know this person to this some extent go with that understanding there can be differences changes over time it doesn't have to be it may not happen but it happens it, we have seen that and please don't generalize other people's relationships as yours as well and don't try to copy somebody else's relationship what works for you may not be what works for another person so you don't have to go at the pace of others, you go at your own pace. That yes. is, I feel, a very important message to, you know, go at your pace and yes. not, you know, get influenced by everything around you, other people or especially social media. Yes, social media, my goodness, yes. <laughs> anyway, doctor, thank you so much for this discussion and I feel that this was really necessary for everyone out there. This is definitely a subjective topic, but I feel it's important to understand what one person wants and what the other person Be wants as well. Be considerate as well. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, no Doctor. Problem. And that was the end of our program on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another topic or issue based on the youth per se. Take care, be safe. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Stay safe and have a good night. Take care.